live, getting results. This is News 6 at 6. Tonight at 6, Ocala's first medical marijuana dispensary is now open for business. What this means for the growing industry in the state. Also at 6, more than a dozen people hurt on Disney property. One bus rear ends another, but this is not the first time we take a look at a similar crash. First, though, tonight, get ready for more cold weather. Most of central Florida will get frosty overnight, minus the coastal communities. The winter weather is hitting hard tonight. This is News 6 at 6. I'm Lisa Bell. Glad you're with us. I'm Matt Austin, but stay patient. We will see the 70s again fairly soon. Let's get you over to Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells. He's pinpointing tonight's cold temps. Tom? Yeah, weather like this never lasts for very long around here. Yeah. Amen. But we do get it. Right now, Orlando Health Camera, temperature reading is 51, wind from the north at 7. Now, obviously, compared to what folks have gone through up north, this is nothing. I get that. But for us, this is kind of chilly. We're already falling into the 50s, down to 48 in New Smyrna, 47 in Gainesville, and 50 just about everywhere else. From Ocala, Villages, Sanford, 51 Orlando, and 50 in Melbourne. Frost advisory is the big dang deal. Flagler County, right on the coast, not you. But everyone else in Flagler, just off the coast, you're in it. Volusia County, coastal parts of Volusia, not in the frost advisory, and no one in Brevard. But everyone else, from those coastal zones back to the north and the west, everyone under the frost advisory until 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Cover up the tender plants or bring them inside, and think about your pets as well. I will be right back. We'll pinpoint the overnight lows where you live, and then we'll talk about tomorrow. We do start to turn it around tomorrow and then get a little better before the rain comes back. See you in a few. Tom, thank you. Breaking right now, a heater causes a house fire in Orange County. This is happening on Quail Pond Street near Goldenrod Road, and that's where News 6's Jerry Askin joins us live tonight. So, Jerry, how badly is this house damaged, and is everybody okay? Man, I tell you, thankfully, everyone is okay. There was an 80-year-old woman. She was inside this home. She was able to make it out safely. Thankfully, she was home alone, firefighters say. And you can't see much damage to the outside of this home, but I can show you um, there was heavy smoke and damage inside the home um, when this fire happened. Now, you see a part of this family's centralized heating unit here. Uh, firefighters saying the blaze happened around 3 p.m. Investigators saying a faulty heater is what caused the blaze today. A sad reality here, but a huge reminder for all of us as we're turning on the heat tonight to check your filters and firefighters say if you see or smell smoke or fire when turning on your heater call the fire department ASAP. Now I spoke to that 80 year old woman and she has a lot of advice and she's so thankful she's okay. We're putting together her reaction and more tips on how to be safe during this cold weather. That's coming up here from News 6 at 11. We're live in Orange County on Quail Pond Road. Jerry Askin, News 6. Jerry, thanks. New developments now breaking tonight about a code red drill at Seminole County Schools. The sheriff's office says it is no longer going to do unannounced code red drills without notifications. The sheriff's office says it will now use a new plan. This plan will include both announced and unannounced code red drills. But when the unannounced drill is conducted, the sheriff's office will notify everyone at the moment that it is only a drill, not a real threat. The sheriff's office says it will tell faculty, staff, students, and parents. This change comes after chaos at Lake Brantley High School last week during a code red. Because of communication issues, many students and staff thought that drill was real, sending some people running. One Disney bus runs into another, sending more than a dozen people to the hospital. Tonight, we are pushing for answers about this crash at the Epcot Toll Plaza. News 6's Nadine Giannis is live outside Florida Hospital in celebration tonight. And Nadine, you spoke with one crash victim's daughter today. What did she tell you about this? Alicia, she was in tears, too upset to go on camera about this, but she said that her parents got on that bus to go to Epcot today to celebrate their 29th wedding anniversary. But instead, her dad was transported here to Florida Hospital in Celebration, where he has suffered a concussion. He was standing on that bus, she said, when he slammed his cheek against something. Disney tonight saying that there is nothing more important than the safety of their guests. 
From Sky 6, it looks like these two buses with the word Disney etched on its side are linked together. But get a look from the ground at the Epcot Toll Plaza taken and tweeted by a park goer this morning. These images showing a shattered windshield of a bus trooper say rear-ended the bus in front of him. That Disney employee and driver, 21-year-old Jacob Butner from St. Cloud, was ticketed for careless driving today. They typically don't stop at that toll booth um, and as they enter Epcot Center. And as the first bus slowed, the second one just failed to slow and rear-ended the first one. The Florida Highway Patrol says the crash happened around 10 o'clock this morning. Of the 51 people, 14 were taken to area hospitals with minor injuries. The Reedy Creek Fire Department, along with FHP and Disney Security, all on scene. News 6 at Florida Hospital Celebration saw a steady stream of Reedy Creek ambulances in and out of the emergency room. It was there we spoke to one woman who didn't want to go on camera but was in tears, saying her father, who was standing up on the bus when it crashed, is now here with a concussion. And it's not the first time it's happened at the same Epcot Toll Plaza. Check out this video from 2010 after a Disney bus driver was cited back then for slamming into this Mears bus stopped for a mechanical issue. It happened just a little further up the road. In this case, seven people were taken to area hospitals. And just looking at our archives, for the last year alone, there have been three crashes involving Disney buses. In this case, Disney says that the driver will not be working until this investigation and this incident uh, is under review. Until then, you can read Disney's entire statement on this incident on ClickOrlando.com. Lisa, back to you. Nadine, thank you. She vanished more than 12 years ago. Her story captured the attention of our entire community. But there are a lot of questions about what happened to Jennifer Kessie. Tonight, her family is filing a civil complaint against the Orlando Police Department, hoping to get some of those answers. Kessie's family is asking the Orlando Police Department to release information about its investigation after more than 12 years of no new developments. The family says police are breaching their obligations to comply with Florida and Orange County records laws. The family says they are calling the case active despite no new leads. They now want all of the documents related to Kessie's disappearance. The complaint is asking for Orlando police to provide those documents within 48 hours. OPD says it is aware of the lawsuit, but it is waiting for it to be given to their legal team for review. Kessie, who was a former UCF student, was reported missing back in 2006 after she failed to show up for work at a financial firm in Ocoee. These are some age progression photos of her. Again, if you know anything about Jennifer Kessie's disappearance, call Orlando Police. Tonight, Governor-elect Ron DeSantis could make it easier for Floridians to obtain medical marijuana. The incoming administration says it will consider dropping some of the legal battles still being waged over the 2016 amendment legalizing med medical cannabis. News 6 investigator Mike DeForest is in Marion County for us tonight, where Ocala's first dispensary just opened for business. Until today, people living in the Ocala area had to travel more than 40 minutes to get to a medical marijuana dispensary. With the opening of Cureleaf here on Southwest College Road, it's helping make treatment more accessible, but many medical marijuana supporters say it's still taking the state way too long to fully implement the constitutional amendment. David Stallings suffers from a form of skin cancer. To ease the discomfort, Stallings recently obtained this state-issued card allowing him to legally purchase medical marijuana in the form of vapes, balms, and oils. The product is getting a whole lot better, a whole lot, remarkably so, because now it's out from under the cloud of secrecy. But Stallings says Florida has not yet fully implemented a 2016 constitutional amendment approved by more than 70 percent of voters legalizing medical marijuana. Part of the holdup has been a series of lawsuits and appeals related to the way Florida issues licenses to cannabis growers and sellers. Some of those challenges have been prompted by the administration of outgoing Governor Rick Scott. Now, with Ron DeSantis moving into the governor's mansion next month, some hope the legal logjam will ease. While DeSantis himself has not offered any specifics, his incoming lieutenant governor says the new administration is not interested in continuing the legal fight and vows that the will of the voters will be implemented. 
I think we're making significant progress every day. Vanit Patel, who oversees Cura Leaf's dispensaries in Florida, says the need for access to medical marijuana can be seen firsthand each time a new facility like this one opens. I think the, the proof's in the pudding. Um, seeing patients come back and visit us often uh, should, should let you know that we're doing something right by them. With the opening of Cura Leaf Ocala, there are now nearly 80 medical marijuana dispensaries statewide, but supporters say there needs to be even greater access. Mike DeForest, News 6. Tonight, a warning for drivers. Your headlights might not be cutting it. How they could be leading to dangerous conditions coming up. Also at 6, a crane changed their lives for months. It crashed into their house, forcing them out. Tonight, we talk with that family who is now back home just in time for the holidays. You're watching News 6 at 6, getting results. We'll be right back. Sponsored by Florida Hospital, ranked number one in Orlando by U.S. News & World Report again. A house divided tonight. There is new information about this Baldwin Park home that had a crane slice through its roof. The family who lives here was forced out of their home back in September, but tonight they are now back at their house and they're showing off what it looks like inside. Looks good. News 6's Clay Lepard gives us a tour. It was a typical September day for the Long Car family until it wasn't. <laughs> when a subcontractor's crane delivering roofing material came crashing through their roof. There's no other word but shocking. I mean, I literally, I didn't know what to do. Since then, it has been a long three months for Dana and Steve Lonkar. It's been hectic. It's been frustrating. It's been busy, hectic. Uh, all the above from the perspective of you don't know how to handle this. The family of four found themselves bouncing between different places to stay, including a hotel and then a friend's home. As quite a bit of work went on outside and inside before they were allowed to move back in. Well, we would never want this to happen, uh, but it did. And we've taken responsibility to get them back in as quickly as possible, and that's the main issue. Essentially, we had the entire roof fall from up there down to this foyer. Thankfully, the crane missed the sprinkler system and major structural spots. If it was to fall in the perfect location, that's where it fell. So it saved the house from totally basically wiping out the whole inside of the house. And other than just a little paint on the outside, the owners here say everything is pretty much back to normal. We're sorting out, getting some things, you know, put back in our home. But for the most part, we're here and we're just grateful to be here. The long cars have family flying in from all over for Christmas. Excited to see what's changed as well as the new ornament on their Christmas tree. It just seemed appropriate this year to get a crane to add our tree. In Baldwin Park, Clay Lepard, News 6. I'm glad they have a good uh, sense of humor. Yes, glad to it. see them smiling now. Because <laughs> I would still be angry. <laughs> but to review the video from September of the Split House, go to clickorlando.com. Well, tonight, a consumer watch about dangerous driving conditions. A new test by AAA finds many older headlights might not be producing enough light for drivers. Today, AAA urged drivers to check their headlights for signs of deterioration. Clouded or yellow headlights are a safety issue. AAA says older headlights provided just 22% of the amount of light a new headlight does. AAA recommends cleaning the lights or replacing them altogether. More than a dozen auto repair or auto cleaning services across Central Florida offer to clean headlights. Most charge anywhere from $40 to $200. Well, tomorrow is the day we've been waiting for. It's our Angel Tree Distribution Day, which means thousands of families in Central Florida will have a happier holiday season because of you, our viewers. And if you still have not brought back your angel, please take it to the Salvation offices on West Colonial Drive. Tomorrow, All Day News 6 will be getting results, bringing you stories from the Joy Center, as we're calling it. We'll be live on the morning show at 9 a.m., noon, and throughout the early evening newscasts. We'll all be out there tomorrow watching the joy come to people's That's right. faces. It is a great day. One of our favorite days here at it News It really 6. is a good time. Well, so many people say they love experiencing all the seasons of mm -hmm. the year. Yes. This You're getting is it, it now. They are getting it now. This is Florida winter Correct. in a big way. We don't like it any colder than this. No, it's been here yeah. a few hours too long already. We're done with it, actually. <laughs> Let me show you what's going on. We've got problems overnight tonight with the big frost advisory. Coastal areas are going to do okay. You're going to hover in the 40s tonight. I think it'll be just fine. But across the interior, just off the coast for Flagler and Volusia, 
You guys are in the frost advisory zone right here. On the coast, no, but just across the interior, you bet. That's where it picks up with patchy frost all across the interior. And a little heavier frost possible from Ocala to Sumter County. You guys go into the frost advisory at 1 a.m. over in Marion Sumter. Everyone else hits the frost advisory at 3 a.m. It comes off the clock at 8 a.m., about an hour after sunrise. Everything starts to warm back up. All will be good. But it's going to be a very, very cold night tonight. Big Ridge of high pressure is doing a number on us, drawing that air straight down from the north right into the heart of central Florida. So it cleared out the cloud cover today, finally, but we really would have loved to hold on to those clouds. That would have helped tonight, but it's gone. Daytime high today was only 57. Overnight low this morning was 41. We should dip below that tonight by a couple of degrees maybe three. Records this time of year are pretty much in the low 30s or the upper 20s, so we're not going to threaten records, but it's going to be cold. Daytona Beach right now already down to 51. Wind is calming. It's 50 from Ocala to the villages, Sanford, Leesburg, 51 Orlando, 50 in Kissimmee. The real feel, still okay right in there. Remember, big wind chill advisories or wind chill problems factoring doesn't really kick in until you're in the 40s, and the winds are starting to lay back. Look, calm in Ocala, Calm in Palm Coast, seven mile per hour wind in Orlando and even along the coast over in Brevard. Where we had 12, 15 mile per hour winds an hour ago. Winds are dying out. That's going to help with the wind chill, but not help with the crashing temp. Once that wind calms, what little heat we had today will lift and just like that, we get cold. Radar is clear tonight. We will not be tracking showers until Thursday. Satellite and radar together shows an absence of the cloud cover, which leads us to the water vapor showing you what ate the clouds. It's all that dry air aloft that gobbled up all the cloud cover. Frost advisory in effect tonight. Tomorrow sunny and cool, but getting better as the day wears on. And then showers return in time for the weekend with the 70s. Watch this. This is 2 a.m. Roll all the way around through the day tomorrow till noon. Cloud cover starts to come in here from the southeast tomorrow. That means we are going to warm up close to 70. And then the rain starts to show up as early as Thursday. For tonight, the overnight lows are low. 32 in Ocala, 34 in the Villages, 35 in Leesburg, and in Orlando, 38. Here's tomorrow. Your forecast brought to you by Del Air Heating and Air Conditioning. By lunchtime tomorrow, we're back to 61. The daytime high, 69. Here's the week ahead. 69 does it for the high tomorrow. Tomorrow night's low is 51. So no more advisories for a while after tonight. Then by Friday, we're back to 75. Dodging showers in the weekend looks a little drier. All right, Tom, thanks. Well, a dad driving with his daughter in the back seat sees a flash as a gun fires at their car. What led up to that scare and who detectives are looking for? That's coming up on News 6 at 7. Also ahead, a man who called 911 for help ends up shot by an officer. More than 12 hours later, what police are not saying about how this all went down. And you're grinched. This will make your heart grow bigger. We mm. told you tomorrow is Angel Tree Distribution Day, but how do you shop for hundreds of kids and seniors in need? The Salvation Army's strategy coming up at 7. It'll grow three sizes, in fact, I hear. <laughs> Ryan is in for Jamie tonight. Could be another game of conference dominoes. The American Athletic Conference sure hopes not. They want everything to stay just the mm -hmm. same. Yeah, we will see how that's shaking out.